Okay, so let's get started. Afternoon lesson. Today in the morning we talked about entity framework, more advanced topics. And I promised you that today in the afternoon we will spend a little bit of time talking about Xamarin. So I would like to introduce Xamarin to you, would like to show you a little bit of tips and tricks and so on. Okay? Good. First, I would like to find out how many of you can create a Xamarin project and run it. Typically, at least it was in the other class like that, typically we have a bunch of problems concerning system requirements and we will, have, we will see how many problems with system requirements we have. So the first thing, before I tell you anything, I would, like, I would ask you to follow along and tell me immediately if you have any problems with the steps that I show you, okay? So start Visual Studio preview version, final version, whatever you prefer to use, and then create a new project. The first thing which is important to check is whether you have the Xamarin project type here. We need this one, mobile app Xamarin forms. Anybody not having this project type? Good. Yes. I was expecting no problems here. Good. Please choose any location that you want. Uh, I will say, I don't know, hello, Xamarin Forms, whatever. Any name that you like. The next thing that we can select is which type of application we want to build. Master detail, tabbed, shell or blank. The first three ones, these three, they already contain a bunch of ready-made code. Mm, it's nice if it fits to your needs, but if you really want to know what's going on, go for the blank one. So we will go for the blank one. And down there, we can select whether we want to run it on Android, iOS or both. And that's the first important thing that you have to understand in Xamarin. Xamarin is for native development but native development compiles to any platform. So it runs on iOS and it runs on Android. Write code once, run it multiple times. For our exercise today, it's enough to go for Android. So please select Android and deselect iOS. Uh, would you do me a favor and close the door? Just thank you very much. Thank you. Did you have any technical problems creating this project? Or did it successfully open? Successfully opened? Awesome. Very good. Next one, and now I expect some problems, is running the emulator. You can essentially run your application in two different modes or you can debug it. You can debug it in an emulator or you can debug it on a physical device. Let's start with the emulator. The easiest way to start the emulator in the latest version of Visual Studio is by going into Tools, Android, Android Device Manager. And here in the Android Device Manager, you should have at least one device of processor type x86 in order to get hardware acceleration. It isn't an absolute must, but if you run an ARM-based emulator on a Windows device, it's becoming very, very slow. So in my case, I have a Pixel 3 device set up. Uh, you, you had your first homework creating such a device and playing through the first uh, thing, but we'll see. And then press start. What should happen now is that the emulator starts up, see it like that, and depending on the speed of your laptop and depending on your settings and everything, it should take between 30 and 60 seconds until the app is, until the, the, the phone has started and you should see Android. My laptop is approximately three years old. It's an i7, nothing special, just an SSD, eight gig RAM, nothing special. So 
this should be the experience that you can expect. Any problems regarding this step? So let me show you the other option. If you have problems with the emulator and it doesn't work, then you can put your phone into developer mode. Do you know how you put a phone, a current Android phone into developer mode? Yeah, go on build number, tap 10 times or so, and then you are in developer mode. And then you can enable USB debugging. Once you have done that, it should look like that. You should be able to use a USB cable. And let me click here. It asks me, hey, Rainer, do you want to allow USB debugging? Yes, I allow that one. And in a few seconds, here we are. We should now have the possibility to debug either on the emulator or on the physical device. See that one? So if I now select the physical device and I press play, I press debug, then Visual Studio will debug my Xamarin Forms application and it should be able to deploy it to my phone, my Pixel device. So, Let's give it a few seconds. The first build of your Xamarin Forms app might take a while. On my computer, it takes approximately 40 to 60 seconds, something like this. So we will need some patience here. The second build, from, now, from then on, everything is a little bit faster. But the first build takes a little bit, unfortunately. If you want to see what the system is doing, you can click down here. And it says building and it will keep you up to date what it currently does and so on. But yeah, it, the building is finished and now it's deploying the app. And in a few moments, we should see, we should see once the deployment is finished, come on, here we are. And you probably can't read it, but it says, welcome to Xamarin Forms. So this is the second option that you can do if you can't run with the emulator. You need a pretty new Android device with a modern uh, Android um, operating system. Otherwise, it's really a pain to work with it. But these two options, uh, th this is the, the kind of experience that you should expect if everything is set up correctly, okay? On-screen debugging, uh, on-device debugging. Let's stop the debugger. And now I would like to show you the same with the emulator. Here you see the emulator. If I switch here to the emulator and I do the same with the emulator, again, I need to have a little bit of patience. Building doesn't need to be done second time, so it immediately starts to deploy. And in a few moments, we should see here on the emulator, nice, our application, it's pretty dumb. It can just display a hello message, see? Welcome to Xamarin Forbes. This is what you should see. Does anybody have problems where I can currently help? Yeah, which problem? Okay, most of you were able to start the emulator. That's good. In the other class, I I really had most who could not start the emulator. So it, it is a success, but still we have some of, some of you have problems. Um, the problems that you currently have are mostly related to the Android emulator. Please don't blame Xamarin for that. You can use any kind of platform. You have to master the emulator. Somehow you have to set it up and it has to be fast enough and it has to, it, the emulator has to work. However, in this course, the focus is on XAML, the programming language used to describe UIs. So for the test, for instance, for the exam, you will not, it will not be necessary to create a mobile app. This would be much too risky and I have no idea how we should do that. So we will talk about Xamarin. I will show you how Xamarin, how XAML in Xamarin works and you will be able to try it and you will get homework. But for the exam, we will try the XAML flavor of WPF and I will show you later on how that works. Yeah. So don't worry if you have a slow laptop and you feel, um, I don't know, that you, you don't know how you should handle the exam with your slow laptop, don't worry, it will not be a problem. You will survive this course. You can even get a one in this course if you can't, if, if the emulator doesn't really good work on your PC, that's fine. But in real life, this is what you have to fix. So if you want to do mobile development in real life, 
you have to set up your system so that the emulator really works nicely, uh, independent of yeah, what you develop. This is the reason why sometimes um, Mac users uh, who do native iOS development um, are joking about the Windows developer using Android emulators because on Mac it just works because it's just iOS and everything is a homogeneous thing. On Windows you have a little bit of Android and a little bit of Windows and Hyper-V and, and everything has to work together so it's kind of a mess. Good. Nevertheless, we will get started with XAML and the first examples that I'm going to show you you can follow along if it works on your computer and if you like typing, okay? But it isn't necessary. The first few minutes or the, the next, I don't know, half an hour or so, it's more important that you understand what I show you. So the concepts are the important thing, not the hands-on stuff. We will have enough time to do some hands-on stuff, okay? So let's take a look at how Xamarin has set up the project. You have two projects in your solution. The first one, the lower one, this is the native Android solution. This one is the native Android solution. So down there you can do all the crazy stuff that really requires access to the operating system and there you can get everything out of your Android, whatever you want. If you would have checked the iOS box, then you would have a third project down here, iOS. The thing that we are going to focus on is the solution above. Because the solution above, sorry, the project above is the cross-platform part of the app. So all the code that you write in this project is available on every platform. It runs on iOS and it runs on Android. Down there, you just add platform-specific stuff. We will not focus on that one. So I can easily fold that one and we focus on this one. Now, everything starts in app.xaml. In app.xaml, here you can see it, you can define so-called resources. It's currently empty and that's fine. But every XAML file has a C-sharp code behind file. Even if the emulator doesn't work on your computer, you can still follow along in the code. So that's fine. So here you see every XAML file has a code behind file. And here you see this is the app. It's the app that is started. And this app here initializes the main page. The main page is the first page that is displayed in your app. And the main page can be found here. It's another XAML file. Let's take a look in this XAML file. It's a content page. That, mean it's, that means it's a simple page presenting some content, arbitrary content. Can be an input form, can be a map, can be an icon, can be whatever you want to display. Inside the content page, you typically use so-called layouts, or in WPF they are called uh, panels. And the stack layout is one of the simplest layout, simplest layout that you can use. Let me quickly demonstrate what the um, stack layout can do. Uh, first, let's rearrange the screen. Let's put the emulator to here and put Visual Studio to here. It is very, very convenient if you do mobile development, if you have multiple monitors. I don't have multiple monitors here, so we will get started with that one. Okay, that looks good. Let's start the debugger, and then I can show you what the XAML stuff does. Build is done, deployment, and and done. Welcome to Xamarin Forms. Please note that down there you should see a message which is called XAML Hot Reload Connected. XAML Hot Reload Connected means that Visual Studio will now automatically deploy any changes to the XAML file to your app without you having to restart the debugger. Let me show you what that means. I can say hello from Visual Studio. I save it, I do not restart the debugger, it will auto-reload and you see, welcome from Visual Studio. Understand it? This does not work with C-sharp changes. So if you change something in the code behind file, here it will not trigger a hot reload. There you have to restart the debugger. There is a button for that, restart the debugger. OK? 
okay? But if you just change the XAML file, your changes are immediately shown here on the right-hand side. Um, this has been developed like this because in many situations you just change some visual appearances, maybe some font colors or font sizes, and you need to frequently change this until you are happy with the design of your app. And therefore you are much, much more often changing the XAML file and less frequently changing the C-sharp code. This is why you have hot reloading for XAML. Good? Clear? Nice. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the XAML stuff here. Some general information about XAML. XAML is an abbreviation and stands for XML Application Markup Language. So it's just XML, yep. Okay, good. So please, can I have your attention again? Because now I would like to show you a little bit of more in-depth information about XAML. Now XAML works like this. Every element here, content page, stack layout, label, and there are many, many more things here, are defined by C-sharp classes. So the fact that there is a label means that there is a C-sharp class called label. The fact that we have a stack layout means that there must be a C-sharp class called stack layout. And that's the core idea of XAML. XAML is just a different way of writing new blah, 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 class name. Get the idea? So I can create the C-sharp class like customer and in XAML immediately I can write element customer. And the fact that there is a text here means that there has to be a property which is called text. Understand what I mean? Normally, if you think about XML, if you define the elements of an XML, what do you typically use? A schema. Do you know what the abbreviation is? For XML you use XSD, exactly. Extensible Schema Definition Language. But for XAML it's different. You don't use XSD, but you just create classes and that's the whole idea of XAML. So, if we go into the browser, we can say Xamarin Forms, and then we can Google for the label class. Let's see. Ah, interesting. There is a label class. You see it? And that is what I wanted to make uh, clear. Every element in XAML, here you see it, has a corresponding C-sharp class with the same name. And if I scroll down a little bit to the properties, we will find a property which is called text, see it here, and it's of type string. That's correct. Text and it's of type string. You get the idea? That's the whole idea of XAML. Once you understood that, um, XAML will not be a problem anymore. Okay? So let's try that. Let's try what we can do with that. For instance, what we can do is, uh, if we take a look at the stack layout class, let's go here and look for uh, Xamarin Forms uh, stack layout. Yeah, you have the stack layout class. And if we take a look, the stack layout class, aha, uh -huh, it has children. Plural, not child, but children. So it should be possible to add multiple labels. Let's try that. Let's simplify the label to something like this. Just label and text, nothing special. And add multiple labels. And if you restart the debugger or if you have hot reloading, you see immediately, aha, uh -huh, I have a list. See that one? Stack layout also knows um, different tricks, additional tricks. You can, for instance, say ori uh, orientation horizontal. If you do it like that, then you will see welcome to Visual Studio side by side. You see four messages, one left to the other. And if we go back to vertical, which is the default, we see the messages one below each other. Here it is. Another important property that you uh, frequently are going to use is the margin property. 
to design your app a little bit. You can, for instance, say, give me a margin of 30, something like this. And this will add a margin to the element. You see, here, 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 30, here, more, because it's left aligned. Get the idea? We can also put the margin around the stack layout. Margin equals 30, and that will give us this one. Because now we have the 30, 30 here. Understand what I mean? Good? Fine? <coughs> Bless you. Difficult? No, I didn't assume that this is very difficult. So next thing, we don't just have labels. We have more interesting stuff. And to get going a little bit, the first thing that we probably need after the label is a button. So button with text equals to click me. If I save that one, I will get a button. Click me. All right. Uh, I, can also, I can already click on this button, but it doesn't have any handler. Another thing that we will probably use today is the entry. Entry uh, with text equals foobar, I don't know, something like this. And if we do that, we will get an entry field. See, here I can click on it and I can type. I'm currently on Android, therefore it looks a little bit like material design. See it? Entry. It is important for you to understand that Xamarin doesn't have its own button. Xamarin doesn't have its own entry or text label and things like that. It's just a C-sharp class. And when you run your app on Android, Xamarin will, Xamarin will automatically look for an Android button and you will get a native Android button in your app. It's not like in Flutter, for instance, a handwritten button implemented by the Xamarin team. So there are mobile development platforms that go down a different road. But here we get the native button on each different mobile operating system. Get the idea? Good. Nice. Let's clean it up a little bit. That's fine. And with that, Let's take a little, bit deep, a, a little bit deeper look what we can do with these labels when it comes to data binding. Can you remember last year when I showed you um, Angular, one of the first things that I showed you in Angular was how to do data binding. You had this banana in a box binding. Can you remember that one? In Xamarin, you have a, sim a similar thing. But conceptually, it is very similar to what you've learned in, in Angular. So if you understood Angular, it will not be difficult to get into, into Xamarin. The syntax is a little bit different, and I would like to show you that, okay? First, let's go into the C-sharp code behind file. Open the main page XAML CS. Even if the emulator doesn't work for you, you can follow along writing the code. That's not a problem. First, Let's create a property, very simple. Let's call it, um, this is the first name. We'll start with the first name. And the first name for our demo is uh, Foo. <coughs> now in XAML, we can say, please display here the content of the property first name. And the syntax for that is something like this, curly braces, binding, path, equals, first name. It doesn't work yet. We need to add one additional line. If I save that, the message will disappear and it will be empty. So this first name Xamarin currently doesn't know where to look for the property first name. It has no idea that first name is a property of the class main page. We have to give it an idea where to look for that. And that looks like the following. We have to set the so-called binding context to this. This is the current object. So this is the main page. This has a property first name. 
And by setting the binding context like this, we can tell our binding here that this first name, please take a look, this first name will be looked up in the binding context, which is a reference to this, which contains the first name here, and therefore we are fine. It will be able to look up the first name. Understand the principle? Good. Let's restart the debugger. We did some C-sharp changes, therefore I cannot rely on hot reloading. It will just take a few seconds. And we should see Ooh. See that one? Good. Next step. So far, everything's fine, right? What do you have to remember from uh, up to here? Stack layout, label, button, entry, and curly braces binding. Good. If I, I I must admit, I don't have slides for Xamarin yet. Unfortunately, I didn't find the time until yet to, to, um, to, to create them, but that's absolutely not a problem because the documentation is really great. So if you just, for instance, say Xamarin, Xamarin forms data binding, if you just Google for that, you will immediately find a good documentation and if you scroll down a little bit, you will immediately find very good documentation and very good samples. And you will have, I already discussed that with my colleagues, you will have uh, access to docs.microsoft.com also during your Matura. Okay, so that's an important one. Good. Now let's do the binding here with the entry. This time, it's not just displaying data, but it allows us to change the data. Binding path, first name. If we do that and we take a look, now it also says foo. Good. Now let's display the content of first name when the user clicks on button. Let's do kind of message box, kind of alert, okay? So for that, please take a look. Click, and then you can say on button clicked, and press just enter. If you do that, Visual Studio will automatically, should automatically, did not automatically, I'm sorry, Ah, I didn't select new event handler. Enter. Then I press enter. And then I changed the name. I'm sorry. On button clicked. I'm sorry. I did it in the wrong order, so I have to change it manually. On button clicked. If you're fine with the default name, that's, that's fine too, okay? So whenever we click on this button here. Yep. Uh, I don't see it. What do you mean? No, ah, I, I know what you mean. No, in this case, you don't need parentheses here. We don't call the method, okay? I need to rebuild it because in um, we changed the C-sharp code. I need to restart the debugger because we changed the C-sharp code. Very good question because in, in Angular, we had to write here something like this, not in WPF and not in, in Xamarin. So just like this, okay? Once we click on this button, we immediately run this code. And here in this code, we can try something, something like display alert. The title should be, I don't know, Hello, the message should be first name and the string, the cancel button should be cancel. That's fine. It's 
So let's give it a try. <coughs> let's run it. It will be deployed. And here we are. And if we press click me, we will see a message box that says, hello, foo. Good. OK, that was kind of trivial up until now. But now it gets a little bit more complex. And the next few minutes, the thing that we discuss here I will repeat it over and over and over and over and over again because this will be one of the most important takeaways for WPF and Xamarin. Let me describe the problem because our application currently has a big problem. Because if I click here and change this one to foo and click click me, that's fine. Hello foo. But see that one? It didn't update. But we have the same data binding. If we take a look here, this is first name, this is first name. We change the first name here. It is changed in C sharp, but the change is not reflected on the screen. So if you want to a certain degree, Xamarin is not as intelligent as Angular. Because in Angular, you were fine. In Angular, it just worked, right? In Xamarin, not. Xamarin is a little bit more stupid. On the other hand, it's faster. Because by not being as intelligent, it doesn't do so many magic things and therefore it's faster. That's the only thing. But we can make this work. And here you have to remember one interface. An interface that I will ask you over and over and over and over again. And this interface is called I notify property changed. I notify property changed. Let's dissect this interface name. Notify property changed. Notify property changed means I, as an object, notify somebody if one of my properties changed. I, me, notify somebody if a property has changed. Understand what I mean? This I notify property changed, if we are here in the main page, we do not even have to write it here because if we take a look at the content page, this is a templated page. A templated page is a page. A page is an whatever, I page controller and so on and so on. And somewhere behind these interfaces, it's already an I notify property change. But just to, just to prove the point, I will keep this interface here, okay? Now we need to somehow inform somebody that my property has changed. And we do it like that. Let me write down the code and then you can, um, yeah, you can change your code accordingly. Private string first name value equals foo. Unfortunately, we can no longer use the auto implemented property. Oops. We have to implement the getter. It's just the first name value. And we have to implement the setter. The setter will store the new value. I will give you enough time to type in the code. And then comes the important part. We have to call on property changed and tell it the name of the property that has changed. This is how a typical property in Xamarin WPF looks like. I'll give you a moment to type in this code. Did it work? 
Let's test it. Let's test it. First, let's analyze the code that we have written. This is the internal storage of the property value. If somebody asks us for the value, we just give it the internal um, value of our, of our variable. If somebody sets the value, we will store the new value and then we will shout out into the world to everybody who is interested, hey, a property of me has changed. This is what we are doing here. Xamarin will detect that we implement this interface. I notify property changed. And whenever we say first name has changed, it will automatically recognize that the first name is used in a data binding and will refresh the data binding accordingly. Do you understand what I mean? So if we now click here and change something, you see up here, it changes accordingly. This is what we were intending. Get it? So whenever you have an object that you display on the screen and you would like to refresh the screen content when something in this object has changed, you have to implement, you absolutely have to implement I notify property change. Got it? This code works exactly the same in a WPF application. So in a, in, in a few weeks, we will take a look at WPF and this whole I notify property changed and all this stuff, it will exactly work the same in WPF. And therefore, you can learn XAML and I notify property changed and all the connected classes in WPF. It's very simple to bring this knowledge over to Xamarin because it works exactly the same. Questions so far? Good? Clear? Good. Now, with this knowledge, let's write a little bit of more interesting code. Let's build a kind of customer form, right? Let's build a customer form where we let the user input a first name, a last name, and then maybe let's display some, some data about the customer. Let's see. But this time, I would like to extract this code into its own class. So please follow along. Everybody can now follow along because this is just C Sharp. Please add, right click, a new class here and call it customer. Oh, we have to stop the debugger, otherwise it will continue complaining. Who can remember the name of the interface that we have to implement in order to display the screen, display the data on the screen? I. Changed. Exactly. I notify property changed. If I wake you up in two weeks at three o'clock in the morning and I ask you this question, I want you to answer I notify property changed. You will never forget this interface again. Believe me, I will ask you over and over again. I notify property changed. Now this time, we don't have the help of Xamarin because we have our own customer class. We need to implement this interface on our own. Let's do that by clicking control dot, enter. This will give us the necessary implementation of the interface and it turns out that it is really trivial. It's just an event. What is an event in C Sharp? It's just something where somebody can subscribe and we inform that somebody whenever something interesting happened. Property change. Typically, you will build a helper method Something like, I don't know, um, protected void raise property changed. It will get the property name. It's just a helper method so that we don't need to write so much code. And then you say uh, property changed question mark dot. Um, just an information for your interest. The question mark dot means don't call the method if it's null. So if nobody is interested what we are doing, then nobody has subscribed the event. Then we shouldn't call this method. Understand what I mean? Invoke. This new property changed event args, name of, oh sorry, property name. 
if you don't fully understand what we have written here with this with this strange um, uh, with this strange question mark dot operator, the so-called uh, null conditional operator, and this whole this and new and so on, don't worry. Yeah, we can't just copy this. This this is now a template. Whenever you in, need to implement I notify property changed, you just need these three lines of code. That's it. Okay. Whenever it comes to the exam, just copy these three lines of code and we are fine. In reality, if we are outside of school and if we are not just learning, typically you never write these lines of code because there are many, many helper libraries out there. For instance, MVVM Lite or Prism and many other libraries that have done it for you. But here in school, I would really like to show you what's going on behind the scenes. So therefore, we don't use any packages yet we will see whether we will use explore some of these packages in the future. Okay, so now let's create two properties, first name and last name. Let's go on. Private string first name value. I always call it with the postfix value. That's just my usual way of doing it. If you don't like this, you can call it whatever you want. Public string first name the getter, it's just the first name value. And the setter, can remember, first name value equals to value. And raise property changed name of first name. Got it? Again, it's a kind of template. It's always the same, always the same. You will write this code very, very frequently. Good, good. And then create a second one, let's say last name. Just copy the code and replace first with last. Replace, 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 replace. Good. And now you see, oops, what did I do? Oh my God. Replace, replace, replace. Good. Now I've done it. I've clicked the wrong button. Do you understand the code that we have written here? Questions. Whenever somebody sets the first name or last name, we say, hey world, my first name or last name has changed. This is what we do with I notify property changed. Now let's make it a little bit even more interesting by adding a read only property. Just follow along and I will ask you some questions. Let's say full name. The full name property should be a read-only property, so we can define it like that. And we say it should be last name, then a comma, and then first name, okay? Something like this. What do I have to change now? Please note, we here have a new property which is called full name. But now I have made a serious mistake when it comes to data binding. Can anybody imagine what that could be? What I'm relating to? Question. If the first name changes, will the full name change? Well, it does, because the first name is part of the full name. Understand what I mean? So whenever somebody changes the first name, Automatically, we have to tell the world not only that the first name has changed, but we have to tell the UI, hey, the first name has changed, and by the way, the full name has also changed, because the first name is part of the full name. Understand what I mean? So we need, we absolutely need to have two race property changes here. So we need to tell Xamarin, hey, by doing this single change, two things have changed, first name and full name. 
Understand what I mean? And of course, we have to do the same here with last name. Because if the last name changes, the full name changes too. Got it? Clear? Awesome. So please keep this file, okay? Don't worry, I've already created this sample in the GitHub repository at the end of this lesson. I will show you where you can find uh, proper formatted code that contains all the things that I've shown you here so you have some copy templates for the exam and for your homeworks, okay? So yeah, we will work it through today, but it's already in my GitHub repo. Good. Now let's use this class, customer. So let's go to the main page here and this time, we don't need this first name stuff here because we're, now we have a separate class and we can change this line. You see here we can just say new customer with first name equals foo and last name equals bar. Get the idea? The binding context is now no longer our main page but we directly bind the business object customer. Do you understand what I mean? Good. Well, the on button click doesn't make any sense now, so let's get rid of the on button click. This is how your main page should look like. Two-liner, initialize component, binding context equals to something. And in the upcoming weeks, you will see that this is a template. It always looks like this. Initialize component, set the binding context. Initialize component, set the binding context. In many cases, this will be the only C-sharp code that is inside your pages. Once your applications get more complex, they will become more complex and you will get more code here, but at the beginning it looks like this and this is perfectly fine. Got it so far? So let's go to the main page and build a nice little form. Let's remove what we have here. We can run it immediately. If it runs on your computer, you can run it in the emulator so that we have the emulator here and we will see what it is. Currently our stack layout is empty. Let's wait until it comes up. Good. Here we are. So first, let's say we have a label. The label text should be first name. This gives us label, just says first name. Then we have an entry. The text is, and now comes the important part, binding path first name. This will allow us to change the first name and if everything works correctly, we should see an entry and I think I called it foo bar, so it, call, it is called foo. Fine. Then let's add a second label and a second data entry, something like this, but this time it's called last name and here last name. Question. Now that you should already be able to answer this question. If I want to have a little bit of distance between the entry field here, foo, and the last name here, what do I have to do? Uh -huh. To which one? Tell me a line number. Uh, I can't see the line number okay. Before, but, uh, before the last name. Before the label last name, exactly. And this is done like that. We say margin equals two, and the margin always works like this. You start with left, then you say comma, then the top margin, then you say comma, then the right margin, then you say comma, and then the bottom margin. So in our case, we could, for instance, say 15, zero, zero, zero. And that will give us, oh, sorry, not 15, I'm sorry, zero 15 because it starts on the left. And that will give us a little bit of distance. Maybe 15 is, is not enough. Maybe let's say 30. Yeah, it looks better like this. Understand what I mean?
Nice. And then uh, at the end, I would like to display with a font size large, I would like to display the full name. No problem. Binding path full name. We already have implemented this property. Maybe design it a little bit better. So we again say we have a margin 0, 30, 0, 0. And maybe to make it really cool, uh, color, text color equals to red. So that we really see what we are doing. See? And now when we change the first name, for instance, if I click here and I change something, immediately everything down there changes too. If I click here and I change something, everything is changed here. Why? Because we have implemented in the customer this raise property changed. If we hadn't added this line of code, the full name would not change. Understand the principle? Don't follow along. I would like to show you that. I will remove the race property change here and I will remove the race property change here. If I now start the debugger, it will come up in a second. Here we are. And if I change something, please take a look nothing changes, you see? So now our app is broken. It doesn't mean that it doesn't change the value of the, the variable. It just doesn't notify Xamarin that the variable has changed. Did you understand the principle of this I notify property changed? Yep, good. So we will create so many I notify property changed in the next weeks, good. Now we have a, a little bit of time left and I would like to, to add um, maybe some funny thing. I don't know. Um, do you know what RoboHash is? Ever heard of RoboHash? Oh, it's a funny thing. I can show you that. Um, RoboHash? It's RoboHash.org. Essentially, it's an avatar generator that generates a comic robot or comic cat or comic monster based on any kind of name. So what you can essentially do, you can enter your name here and then click generate and then you will see what you are as a robot. And the important thing is that this is, see that, just a URL. So what you can essentially do, if you scroll down, you see it a little bit better. Uh, where is it? Here. You can just do something like this. You see, and you get a robot. If you change your text to anything else, you get a different robot. If you change the text to, again, something else, you will get a different robot. And, uh, come on, so, it just takes a while because the network is not that fast, but at some point in time, we will probably see, or not, a robot. Here it is, the robot. And you can also specify a style. You see it here, styles of robot. So you can say you want to have the cat style. You see this one, set for. So if I say something like question mark this one, then I will get a cat associated to the string. Isn't it nice? So what I want to do is I want to auto-generate a new robot and displayed in my Xamarin application depending on the first name and last name that the user entered. Get the idea? Wouldn't, be no, wouldn't that be nice? Let's do that. Uh, before that, it's getting pretty dark, so I will turn on the light a little bit. So, let's add a new property here in our customer class. Customer class here. 
So let's go here and let's call it, I don't know, avatar URL. And this avatar URL should be, let's remember that one, something like this. Um, I'm a big fan of cats. I have two cats at home, so I will use the set four. You can decide whether you want to have cats or robots or monsters or whatever. But here we just say, let's say last name, and then I will choose a dash here, first name. Something like this. Oops. What do I have to add in order to make this work? Come on. I know you're smiling, you already recognized it. What do I have to add? I will not write it until you tell me. Will the avatar URL change if the last name changes? Well, the variable yes, but it will not be displayed. Okay, raise property changed. You, you understood it. I, I, I get it. You just didn't want to tell me. This is what we need. Now we have an avatar URL. Cool. That's running in the debugger. Where is my emulator? Here is the emulator. This is just basic code, don't get me wrong. In real life, with more complex application, you will probably write a little bit more different code, but it's good to understand the basics. So if we now go to main page, I would like to display the robot here on top of the label. And luckily, there is something which is called an image. And this image allows us to give it a source. And guess what? We can do data binding here. So all we need to do is we need to say binding path equals avatar URL. That's it. And if we do that, and we wait a few more moments, then, haha, -ha, I have a cat. See that one? And if I change it, I say something like this. Let's wait a few more moments. The network is not that fast. I have a different cat. Maybe we will add the margin again to make it a little bit more beautiful. Yep, and now I like that one. I want to see which cat I am, so let's enter my name. And? The problem is he has to read out every form to have done it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, this is my cat. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I kind of like it, it's okay. Does it work? So RoboHash is, is really nice if you build an application and you need to generate some kind of avatars for your users or something like this. It's really a funny service and it works nice. So maybe you can use it for other demonstrations or other exercises too. Questions, did you understand the race property changed? Fine, good. So let's apply this knowledge. Let's apply this knowledge by displaying a list of customers, okay? And we will do it like that. Please right click, uh, stop the debugger if you, are, if you are debugging, if not, um, yeah. Right click on the project, add new item, and this time I'm going to use a list view page. See this one? List view means I'm displaying a list of elements. And in my case, I want to display a list of customers. List view page here. And I call it, I don't know, customers list page. You can call it any way you want. Good.
fine. I would like to make this customers list page my main page, the main page of my application. Can anybody remember where the main page of the application was specified? In the app. Exactly, in app XAML CS. Here we currently have main page and we will see customer list page. This is now my main page. Customers list page. Good. Now let's clean up the code a little bit. Um, the, the list view, the auto-generated list view, contains a bunch of stuff that we currently don't need. This X name, we don't need it. This caching strategy, it's important, but for beginners, we don't need it. It's just like that. This D colon, this one, we don't need it. It's for design time only. We will simplify our stuff. And the whole commented out code here at the bottom, everything, go away. We want to keep everything nice and clean to start with. This is how your list view should look like. Good. And you know what? Let's make it even simpler. We only have 15 minutes left. So item tapped, remove that one and remove that one. So this is all we need for now. Good. Now this time, let's take a look at the list view. We have a binding, but the interesting thing here is that the list view is a view that cannot just display a single data item, a single customer, a single string, but the list view is, as the name suggests, a list of elements. So this binding here will return a collection of customers. Understand what I mean? So let's do that. Let's go into the code behind file here. And again, we can clean up a little bit, but first this one, change that <coughs> items here to Customers, customer. Now this is interesting. We see here an observable collection, not a list or a collection, but an observable collection. Can anybody guess what an observable collection is for? Um, collection where you can detect any changes, for example. Exactly, I notify property changed. Just like I notify property changed, there is a second interface which is called I notify collection changed. If something changes, I will tell the UI to refresh. This is what observable collection is for. So whenever you have a collection in Xamarin that you would like to display on the screen, always use observable collection. If you ever have an, an oral exam with me, it's not impossible that I ask you whether you should use a list or an observable collection for WPF or Xamarin. And then you should answer observable collection. Okay? So let's get rid of this stuff here. This stuff and this stuff. Again, simplify it. And maybe let's create two customers, okay? So let's say uh, items equals new observable collection. And let's add a new customer with first name foo and last name bar, something like this. And maybe let's add John Doe and Jane Smith. Uh, you can add more customers if you want, but we just need a bunch of demo data. That's it. That's all we need. Good. Now before we had a property that we had to set in order to make data binding work. I will show you, well, if I show you the code behind file of the main page, you will immediately see it, but that's fine. 
this one. Can you remember what I told you? Initialize component binding context. So what we need to set is the binding context. And uh, to make things simple, I will just say this, because then we can bind. Let me illustrate what's going on here. This binding context is set to the class. Here we have a binding to items. So this items here is looked up in the customer list page because it is the binding context and from there you see it's found. So this is why this stuff works. Get it? Yes? Good. So customer list page. Good. Let's give it a try. Let's run it. It will fail, so don't worry. That's fine. We have a few minutes left, so it's fine if it fails now. Come on! Good. Nothing is displayed here. If you look up very, very closely, I, I don't know if you can see it on the video beamer, we have in light gray three lines here. So something is displayed, but not the correct thing. Why? Because we are binding here to dot, and dot means we bind to the entire customer. There is no entire customer. How should it paint the customer on the screen? What we have to do is we have to tell it that we would like to display the full name, for instance. And if we do that, magically, we have the full name. See it? Now let, let's close by writing this stuff a little bit more interesting inside of the data template. I will not go into the details what a data template is. We could, for instance, write the following. I'll just write down the code. If you want, you can follow along, nothing new, just to close with a nice little picture. We could say, let's create a stack layout. Inside of the stack layout, we do um, here orientation horizontal. On the left hand side, we take an image with source binding avatar URL and a width of let's say 50 pixel, something like this. And then we, uh, we, we stack the stacks. <laughs> we embed a second stack layout on the right where we say Give me a text, uh, give me a label, and this label, the text should be binding full name. And let me show you how that looks like. I hope it looks nice. Yeah, you see? It takes a while until all our caps appear, but they are here. There should be a third, a third cat. It's just uh, the question of the, of the Wi-Fi. You see, now we have a customer list. And we can now pimp this stuff and make maybe a little bit of a margin, let's say margin of 20 to make that more, more easy to read or more, more beautiful here. Uh, please add to the list view here, add, add has uneven row through because then it auto sizes the, the lines and we will see something. Yeah, see? And then we can play around. We can say the font size is large, but I think you, by now you should understand the principle. Get it? And if something changes, the user interface is always redrawn automatically because of I notify property changed and I collection changed. Good? Good. 
with that, I think we can close for today. Um, let me quickly mention the, the ready-made um, sample here. In my HTL Mobile Computing 5 repository, you have here a Xamarin subfolder and you will receive more samples here. And there you see Hello Xamarin and here you see a form page where you have the entry form and you see the list view page where you have a nice list view. So you do not need to remember that stuff. You can just take a look in my GitHub repository. So, how do you like that programming model? Works nicely, isn't it? If once you understood what this iNotify stuff is and this curly braces binding, you can really build pretty amazing stuff within a few minutes. And it is a native app which compiles down to native Android and native iOS without ha you having to write the code two times. Good? Fine? Good. Thank you very much. That's all for today. Please don't forget the remaining homework. It's really, really important to take a look at the bike rental example because it will be relevant for your Matura. So please spend a little bit of time. Um, and if you haven't watched the video about uh, what I gave you last week about how to auto-generate APIs from Entity Framework, take a look at it. It will help you a lot when it comes to exams and the Matura, okay? Good, have a nice week.